What's going on everyone? I do believe this is my first blogging video of 2020. But before I get started, I encourage any of you out there who may be battling with depression, anxiety, PTSD, bipolar, or any other form of mental illness that significantly impairs your thinking patterns and makes you think highly negatively about yourself, I want you to pause the video and think of at least one good thing you can say about yourself. Now I understand this can be challenging, especially when you feel like you're not getting anywhere in life or you feel like that you're never gonna amount to anything, but I really encourage you to dig deep and I'm gonna give you guys some motivation. The 2010s weren't exactly the most uh, wonderful years of my life. Uh, depression, anxiety, loneliness, not to mention the fact that I chose a degree that is not far from useless and now I am nearly $140,000 in total debt with the vast majority of it being student loans, credit card debt, not the wisest decisions. Uh, when it comes to social interaction, I can't seem to really make any friends. I'm socially awkward. And when it comes to the ladies, well, let's just say I'm probably one of the lesser desirable guys out there. And if it comes to having to defend myself, whether I need to stick up for myself, chances are I probably could not even fight my way out of a paper bag. And so what is one of the good thing I can say about myself? Well, I am learning something new every day in the field of data science, whether it's learning to tap a new line of code or learning about the different algorithms and machine learning, I make it a point to learn something new every day. So that is one good thing I can say for myself and I encourage you to do the same for you. And feel free to list it down in the comments below. And so I've been doing a lot of talking about how I'm making this career uh, change from health and fitness to data science and I can only do so much talking about goals, so it's time to walk the walk. And I mentioned in my previous video that I did get accepted to a master's in data science program at the University of Denver, and if all goes well, I will be starting this fall. But I figure I might as well be as prepared and as confident as possible. So I'm gonna do some coding for you guys. And keep in mind, this is not meant to be a tutorial video, so I apologize if some of my terminology is off but I wanted to just kind of show you guys in action some of the stuff I've been learning, some of the stuff I've been doing, because it's a great way to keep your mind off. And especially, I know it's been working for me, keeping my mind off the negativity. So what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna to attempt to create a frequency table and at the end, create a pie chart to kind of give you guys a little visualization of the data that I'm analyzing. So before I get started, and keep in mind, uh, I'm probably going to make some blunders along the way here, but that's all part of coding, making mistakes, learning to read the errors, and doing some debugging. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I've already downloaded my libraries here, Pandas, uh, NumPy, Matplotlib, and so I'm going to examine my data set by figuring out how many rows and columns I'm dealing with. So what I've got to do here is I got to first thing I got to do is I got to restart my kernel because that's that's the first thing I need to do here. So I got my first error. There we go. So almost 7,200 rows and 17 columns. So not exactly the smallest data set, but not the biggest either. But nonetheless, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine an individual row. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine one row. So, uh, if you notice, each of these uh, elements within this list or row has an index number. And the one, the one particular column that I'm really interested in is going to be at index. Uh, if I'm doing reverse indexing, it's going to be at negative nine. So it looks like this is the figure I'm interested in. So if I count back one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine. This is the column I'm going to be interested in, and that is uh, user ratings. And this data set consists of apps. And one of the variables here is a uh, user rating. 
like how the user rated their app. So now what I'm going to do is I want to see what, like what percentage of users gave like a 4.0 rating or what percentage of users gave a 5.0 rating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating a function because let's say I downloaded another data set. I don't want to have to be retyping the same code over and over again. And especially if someone else is going to be reading my code, they don't want to have to be reading excessive code. So I'm going to start off by creating a function and I'm going to create a frequency table function. And I'm going to pass in a couple of parameters. And so now I've got to first off create an empty dictionary because that's how I'm going to create this frequency table. And so now it's time to do some for loop action. So for value and data set, all right. Now, it's kind of difficult for me to kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm typing along. So I got to really hand it out to those people who can make tutorial videos on this subject matter. But I'm sure with years of experience, it becomes second nature. Oops, looks like I got a little typo there. You got to really watch those typos because it will cause... Um, an error to occur, so make sure there's no typos. And so now I gotta return, I'm gonna return frequency table. And let's see what happens. Oops, looks like I got a little error. Oh, forgot an equal sign here. That's an easy fix. All right, so let's see how that works. Okay, so far, so good. Now what I'm going to do is to see if this worked, I'm going to plug in a couple of arguments back into my function. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to plug in. So I'm going to uh, let's say I'm going to assign it a variable too. So I'm going to say rating frequency. Is equal, so I'm basically assigning, this is my variable. I'm going to assign uh, the actual frequency table to this variable. And since I mentioned about negative indexing, I'm going to call on that particular index. So each of these, uh, each of these, like I mentioned, represents a column because it's only one row. And so I'm going to call on uh, index negative nine. And so now let's see what I get. So, so far, so good. No error. So now I'm going to print. And there you have it. I have successfully created a frequency table. Now, this may be a little hard to read, but I'm going to explain some things here. So what you see here are what are called key value pairs. So this is the key, and this is a value. This is another key, another value, and each of them are separated by a column. So these are referred to as key value pairs. Now, to make my pie chart, I'm going to want to extract each of these values and create them into a list, and then each of these keys and create it into its own list in order to make my pie chart. Now, I'm sure there are various methods to do this. Some are probably more efficient than others, but with more experience, you know, your code does get cleaner and more precise, but this is all part of the learning process. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here. So I've got my rating frequency. So that's my, uh, that's uh, what's going on here is my rating frequency. And so, now I'm going to extract these values. And so never mind the background noise. That's my roommate doing some vacuuming. And that's the whole excitement of getting into this new career field is the potentiality to not have to be able to be so broke that I have to live with random people. Oh, it's just the roommate saga has got to come to an end, guys. I mean, it's just I'm 45 years old and still living with roommates. I mean, that's just that's just no muy bueno. OK. Back to the task at hand. Okay, so now I'm going to do, and I'm going to extract the values only. And so now it's going to be, ah, I got 
area. Okay, so, so far so good. And now I'm gonna go to do the same thing for the keys. I'm gonna create a list for each of these keys. Okay, so now just to check and see if I want, well, I'm gonna print each of these variables here. So that's exactly what I wanted to see, but now I have to convert it to a list. So now I'm just gonna come back up here and I'm just gonna put list for all this. And so now I'm gonna convert them to a list format. And that's an easy fix. So as you can see here, it says dic key values, dictionary keys. So I wanna change that so it's a list format. So now they're both in list format. Now it's time for the really fun part and doing some data visualization. So now I'm going to create a pie chart. So I'm going to start off by, and I'm going to make it fairly large. So let's go ahead and do Okay, so that's good there. Okay. So now I'm actually going to create a pie chart. So I'm going to come back up here and do, I'm going to pass in the rating vac values. Now I'm going to assign the labels and those are actually going to be uh, these uh, keys. So I'm going to assign those the actual, actual labels. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna round this off to two decimal places. For when it displays uh, uh, percentages. And there we have it, successfully created a pie chart. And so it looks like the majority of users rated their app a 4.5. And so that's the awesome thing about doing analysis. Now, as I get more uh, advanced and uh, improve on my skills, uh, when you start getting into data science, that's where you start doing like predictive analytics, machine learning, where this is more, I wanna say it's more like just doing like analysis, but this is all part of the process. Uh, this is just showing you guys some of the stuff I've been doing because I figured it's time to walk the walk. I mean, I can talk all I want about my future goals, but I'm going to start making uh, more of these videos that's kind of documenting my journey um, and get myself on to a better trajectory in life. And so now I'm going to show you guys uh, uh, one or two projects I've been working on, and I'm going to be doing more along the way. I, you can be certain of that, but I want to show you guys one of these projects I've been working on. So if I come back over here, what I've done here is I've uh, examined the past 50 years of snowfall at the Mount Baker Ski Area and at Paradise Mount Rainier, and I've even done some comparisons between the two. And so first thing I did here was create a little bar chart of the Mount Baker Ski Area snowfall, at averaging the amount of snowfall for each decade from the 1970s on up to the 2010s. And then I did the same thing for Paradise at Mount Rainier. And then I took it up a step and did a side-by-side -side comparison, uh, the blue being Mount Baker and orange being Paradise. So it looks like Paradise Mount Rainier uh, edges out Mount Baker when it comes to uh, annual snowfall and average snowfall for each of these uh, past uh, five decades. And then I come down here and there, this is a lot of code here, and I'm sure with more experience, uh, I'll start to use uh, other visualization techniques to reduce the amount of code I'm typing. But what I did here is I created a series of uh, subplots, and I know they can be hard to read, and I might try to fix this, but uh, all this code here is to create these uh, uh, line graphs here. 
And I kind of wanted to show you something here. Is you may have noticed that there's like uh, these shadows right here, like the shadow effect uh, is a little bit bigger than these last uh, three charts here. And that's because on the Mount Baker Ski Area website, they mentioned that DOT took snowfall measurements up until 1990. So I figure, okay, maybe the DOT is not as accurate uh, at taking snowfall measurements than the ski area themselves. So I took that into consideration and I actually accounted that for the amount of error. Hence why you see a 0.2 here and a 0.2 there to represent the decades from the 70s and 80s up to 1990 and then less of an error down here. So that 0.1 and it's reflected on these charts here. As you can see, there's a wider um, error range compared to these last three charts. And then as I come down here, I decided to make another uh, frequency table and another, another pie chart. But this time I wanted to group uh, year, uh, years into uh, like how much snow they got. So if it was a low snow year, it was like 400 inches or less of snow uh, snowfall. If it was like a medium year, it was like six to 800 and uh, four to 600 inches. A high was six to 800 inches and like an ultimate or what some people would consider an epic year would be above 800 inches annual snowfall. And so I created another function, a little bit more complicated here. And then at the end, came down with a pie chart and kind of uh, chose different colors here. Uh, so I kind of went a little more detail in this pie, pie chart here. And so it looks like uh, the majority of the seasons over the past 50 years, 34% would fall into this high ca into this high category, meaning six to 800 inches. Now this is for Mount Baker ski area. I'm gonna do the same thing uh, for uh, Mount Rainier, Paradise on Mount Rainier. I'm not going to do that for this video because I think this video has gotten long enough. But there you have it. This is some of the stuff I've been working on. This is some of uh, the stuff that's really getting me excited into getting to, to uh, into this career field of data science. And it's time to put past failures aside. Health and fitness was not the best choice. Uh, the past decade filled with a lot of loneliness, depression, anxiety. Uh, kind of just like, where did I go wrong in life? But it's stuff like this, learning new stuff every day, getting myself as prepared as possible. And who knows, maybe if I do enough of these projects, because uh, before I uh, end this video, uh, there's a website called GitHub. And a lot of people will upload projects onto their GitHub uh, account. And it's a way for, potential empl uh, for employers to potentially come across some of these projects. And what it does is these projects pretty much demonstrate uh, the person who's doing these projects that they know how to apply the skills into doing whatever they may be doing. So doing projects, it's a really great way to reinforce what you've learned and to actually apply and show potential employers that you know how to do certain things. So that's another potential avenue. So hopefully all goes well. The roommate saga will come to a quicker end than expected. But I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, uh, blogging slash kind of uh, documenting the beginnings of my data science journey. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I encourage all of you out there to come up with at least one good thing you can say about yourself. And although it may be challenging, dig deep because that's all we can really do is focus on the good and try to flush out the negative. So I just want to conclude by saying I thank you all for continuing to support and watch my videos and I'll be back with more. Thank you all for watching. Peace out.